What is going on guys? Thanks for tuning in to watch this edition of the channel. I am the SMT. Welcome back to the SMT YouTube channel. Today we're going to be covering the history of T-Mobile. This video has actually been a long time coming. I've done the history of Verizon. I've done the history of AT&T. I've even done the history of Sprint. Those are all done. I've covered those in the past several months. I'll put links to those videos in the description box as well as in cards throughout this video. I'll even put end cards at the end of the video so you guys can watch those if you haven't seen them yet. But this is the big one. This is the one that I feel, you know, was the culmination of all the histories of because the reason I say that is T-Mobile is, I, I won't even say arguably, they are the most impactful carrier in wireless for the last decade. T-Mobile is a lot of things. They're the fastest growing carrier in America. Uh, they've been doing this for a long time. It's been sustainable. Uh, they've done it at a crazy fast rate, uh, really unprecedented. I can't remember at any time in wireless where a telecom was able to do the things that T-Mobile has done over the course of the last seven or eight years truly is remarkable. T-Mobile now has a reputation. They have an image. They have a loud and well-known CEO. They've got a business model. They've got energy. They've got momentum. And they've got a business model that is definitely going to work for them. It's worked for them previously, it's worked for them currently, and it should continue to do that in the future. If anything, at least I think we can all agree that T-Mobile is disruptive and it's done nothing but help the consumer from the beginning when John first took over the company in 2013 to currently the way it is today. I personally can't say enough about the guy when it comes to business practices and what he's done to disrupt the market. I'm already really amped up and I'm actually getting ahead of myself, but let's go ahead, cue the intro. All of that information in the history of T-Mobile starts now. Before we get going with today's video, I do want to give a special shout out to the patrons over on the SMT Patreon. If you want to consider heading over there and becoming a community member on that platform, there's a link in the description box below. We've got three different tiers you could come in at. We've got a $1, $2, and a $3 membership tier. You could support production here on the SMT YouTube channel and get a lot of exclusive and unique perks only found on the Patreon page. You'll also find a link to the second YouTube channel where all of my live stream podcasts get archived, as well as some other links. We've got a Discord link, we've got the SMT Twitter handle, at Sneed Tech, and we also have the SMT Wireless Report audio-only podcast on your favorite podcast applications, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, just to name a few. There are links in the description box for those as well. Lastly, Megadon is the social media of the future. You'll never need to switch platforms ever again. Support yourself, support me, the SMT. Head over to the Megadon.net invite code down in the description box. No algorithms, no tracking, no ads. Do check out that link down there in the description box. In terms of producing this particular video, it wasn't as hard to do the research on T-Mobile because the company is just not as old as the others. The AT&T history of video took me endless hours of research and then kind of building together a plan of how I wanted to present the material. Verizon, you know, it was a complicated breakup with AT&T as one of the Bell sisters, you know, that came out of that split. So that was kind of complicated, tons of mergers and acquisitions. And then Sprint has a really deep history too. So those videos were really time consuming, involved a lot of research. This one, because T-Mobile doesn't have the extreme deep roots of those companies, this one should be a little bit easier. And I start with the deep history of T-Mobile and then it's actually not that deep. But anyways, we'll get to the recent history second, and then we'll talk about the current state of T-Mobile and what they've been doing, as well as the future of T-Mobile. That'll be the fourth part and that'll kind of wrap up the video. Origins of T-Mobile, and it actually starts in 1994 with VoiceStream. Uh, VoiceStream Wireless PCS was the original company that would end up becoming the T-Mobile, but it was actually a subsidiary of what was known as Western Wireless Corp, which has roots dating back to 1988. Uh, at that time, it was a regional a uh, rural carrier that was only available in a handful of locations throughout the U.S. Deutsche Telekom, which is the parent company of the current T-Mobile, uh, what they ended up doing was purchasing VoiceStream uh, in May of 2001 at, a, I believe, a purchase price of $35 billion. Uh, and then this became the company that we know today as T-Mobile USA. Now that's really pretty much it for the deep history of T-Mobile. I really didn't want to get into any of these smaller you know, acquisitions of what Western Wireless Corp did and what VoiceStream did, you know, prior to that acquisition and uh, the purchase by Deutsche Telekom of VoiceStream. So that kind of ends the deep history part. And like I said, there's not much for a deep history for T-Mobile. 
For the second part, the recent history, this is a lot more interesting and there's a lot more details. To get things started in 2002, as they were starting to operate as T-Mobile US, uh, the headquarters were uh, and still are held at Bellevue, Washington. They became the third largest wireless provider uh, currently at 86 million subscribers. Uh, they do have service here in the U.S., as well as in other parts on territories, including Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. One of the things that was kind of understated as I was doing the research for this video uh, was this early 2000s voice stream acquisition of Omnipoint and Aerial Communications. This did give them a collection of customers and some assets that added value to the company. And then Deutsche Telekom then acquired voice stream following that. So this gave them a total of 7 million subscribers. And then they actually had another purchase of Powertel, which gave them an additional 5 million subscribers. So this put them at about 12 million subs. Uh, secondly, in terms of what was paid, uh, this was a $35 billion purchase for voice stream. And then for the power tell, it was $24 billion. Takes us from the early 2000s, we'll start transitioning towards 2007, where T-Mobile actually bought Suncom Wireless Holdings. It was a $2.4 billion purchase. Uh, this gave them $1 million. Uh, subscribers, customers. It also gave them service and coverage in Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, uh, U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. Things kind of got quiet from 2011 on until the possible merger between AT&T AT and T-Mobile, which happened in 2011. Ultimately, the merger failed. Uh, it was actually blocked. Uh, there were a bunch of politics kind of you know, being the force behind blocking it, uh, striking resemblance to what's currently going on with the current merger with Sprint. I'm not really going to get into too many crazy details about that failed merger. I actually did a video on it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in a card right up here. If you guys want to check it out either after the video or at a later time, you guys can do that. It, it was, you know, it had huge wireless uh, you know, extensions into how it could have changed the trajectory of wireless telecoms. I mean, you could imagine if AT&T did get that deal, what would have happened? Ultimately, what would have been the number two carrier combining with or acquiring the number four carrier would have essentially given AT&T about 130 million subscribers back in 2011, which would have been an insane number. It would have catapulted them into first place in terms of market share, clearly above and beyond anything Verizon had going on. Due to the failed merger attempt, AT&T had to give up some concessions. They actually had to pay some penalties that all went towards T-Mobile. One of those things being $3 billion in a concession fee. They also had to give up some spectrum to T-Mobile. And of course, that was very helpful to them. And probably the most important thing, in my opinion, is the seven-year roaming agreement that T-Mobile was able to operate along on top of AT&T's current infrastructure and network. Uh, it gave them coverage when they really didn't have it nationally to really bolster any type of a major national network, so it really did change the game for them. Fast forward from 2011 to 2013, we have the Metro PCS merger. In my opinion, it really wasn't much of a merger. It really was an acquisition. Uh, you know, in that case, uh, you had uh, March approval. I think this was March of 2013. Uh, the DOJ and the FCC did clear it. Obviously, there was much more eagerness to approve this merger because you're talking about the number four carrier combining with the number six carrier. All it did was make a better third or fourth carrier, in my opinion. I didn't see why they would want to, you know, not approve that. Uh, it, it gave T-Mobile more market share. It gave T-Mobile a more comprehensive network because of the Spectrum Holdings. Before I start moving too fast, I've already kind of passed up John Leisure who really is the most important part of T-Mobile. We're talking about a person who came in and resurrected a company who really didn't have any type of identity as a wireless telecom. John changed everything. John came in, he created a disruptive culture, he created a cult-like following, and he did so with bravado, he did so with confidence, and he did so in a relentless fashion. He's a unique person, he's a unique CEO. He did something that nobody was willing to do in a business and a market that never saw anything like this before. He came on in 2012. That means the merger with Metro PCS was one of the first events that he was a part of. Uh, what they were able to do in 2013 moving on really was unprecedented, literally coming from nowhere and becoming this major disruptive force in wireless telecom. Those of you that don't really know John's background, John was previously an executive at AT&T, which is why I always kind of laugh and joke and tease about John being a sellout because John used to work for the company that uh, he frequently calls Dumb and Dumber, them and Verizon. So it's just kind of ironic and also entertaining to kind of joke about that. 
He held other positions. I know for a fact that he worked at other big corporations, Dell being one of them. I think he also worked at HP. Don't quote me on that, but I feel like he did. Uh, so the guy actually has some really valuable experience working in larger corporations and companies. He knows the ins and the outs of the business, but he knew what he had to do in telecom with uh, the uncarrier, which is what we'll get to next. The failed merger was huge. John was also a huge gain for the company, uh, gaining all those customers, gaining the Spectrum assets, getting the money, getting the subscribers, all the stuff that was happening like 2011 uh, to 2013 was big, but it was the uncarrier moves that did everything for customers. This was the focus of what John was going to do as the CEO. He was going to change the market. He was going to change the whole approach to how you're supposed to be treating customers and how to gain customers and make a company grow. The uncarrier really is John Ledger's legacy in telecoms. He's going to be retiring soon or, you know, as re he's going to be stepping down. He's not going to renew as CEO. Uh, he will stay on the board at T-Mobile, but this will be his lasting legacy as to what he did at T-Mobile. It's going to be the uncarrier moves. It was all about freeing customers from the reins of carriers like Verizon and AT&T and even Sprint at the time. So what he was doing was something unique and different, and it really did shake up the industry and people took note of this. For those of you that have been following my channel for a long time, you know where I stand about T-Mobile and John. I would like to take a moment to thank John Leisure for all of his efforts and what he's done in the wireless telecom business. I don't agree with a lot of things that he says, but I agree with pretty much everything he does. John can say a lot of different things, and sometimes he actually sounds ridiculous and childish. But let me say this. Even before I became a T-Mobile customer, John actually benefited me because I was a customer on Verizon for a long time, and when they got rid of unlimited data plans, it was devastating. He forced the issue. It's because of John Leisure we actually have unlimited data plans today. Do you really think AT&T and Verizon wanted to bring them back? Do you really think Sprint even wanted to bring them back? I don't think so. I think it's because of John. A lot of people that have unlimited data plans, even if they're not on T-Mobile, of course, those that are on T-Mobile, they owe him a huge thank you. We wouldn't have unlimited data if it wasn't for John. We wouldn't have gotten rid of all those phone subsidies and two-year contracts if it wasn't for John. There's a lot to be thankful for. John is a complete disruptor. He's a unique CEO. And who knows if we ever see a guy like him in wireless telecom. That's where we stand. Currently, T-Mobile has been the fastest growing telecom, the most disruptive carrier. They benefited pretty much anybody that has wireless service, whether you have T-Mobile or you have a different company. But now it's gotten to the point where really, this is all about T-Mobile as the new T-Mobile, merging with Sprint. And of course, we've got all this litigation. There's all this stuff going on in courts. We're waiting on uh, whether or not the block is going to be approved or if it's going to be disproved. So we're waiting on those things. But of course, that's the current situation. T-Mobile all in on the merger with Sprint, and that is going to completely change the wireless landscape with Dish coming in as the new fourth carrier and the new T-Mobile being a huge third competitor. And with or without the merger, the new T-Mobile is going to be moving forward with Mike Sievert as the new CEO. John is going to step down here shortly. Uh, he will stay on as a board member, but he will not serve as the CEO beyond May. When you think about the growth of what T-Mobile has experienced, one plus million subscribers for basically almost, yeah, it's been like seven years in a row, eight years. Uh, they've got like 27 quarters in a row of one plus million subs, some quarters adding over 2 million. It really is amazing to see them go from basically uh, 20 million subscribers acquiring or merging with Metro, having like 30 million subscribers and literally under John Ledger adding 50 million subscribers in less than a decade. Truly a phenomenal feat. I think consumers have probably noticed this, but if you notice that the uncarrier has slowed down, we don't see those same deals anymore. We don't see those game-changing moves. I think there's only so much that a company can do to try to shake up the industry. At some point, companies are probably thinking to themselves like T-Mobile, we need to be more profitable. We need to change some of the things that we're doing from the corporate side. And I think that might be one of the reasons why John feels like maybe this is the time for him to go. Maybe Deutsche Telekom and T-Mobile have to start moving in a slightly different direction, a more profitable direction a more corporate direction. I'm getting a sense that may be where it's going. Purely speculation on my part, but I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on that topic. You guys can drop me a line in the in the comment section below. That's where T-Mobile has been. That's where they're from. That's where they're at. And that's probably the direction in which they're going. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Uh, if there's something that you think I missed or I overlooked, I'd love to hear from you guys. In the comment section, let me know if maybe I glanced over something that was a bigger deal than you think, or 
if there's something that I completely missed or if there's something that I'm overstating and you think isn't that big of a deal, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. The voice of the SMT Nation, the pulse of the people is very important to the SMT. So let me know. Uh, drop me a line down in the, in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If you enjoyed this video, do please hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, you know, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload from the SMT. And do share this to your favorite social media. That would help the channel out tremendously. Thank you so much in advance for that. Before you go, do check out some of these other videos. I've got a couple of them up here and a couple of them down here. You guys can peep those if you want to hang around and see some other stuff from the SMT. I'm sure you would find those enjoyable. And please do rate those videos well and, and like them. That would be awesome. Thank you so much in advance. That wraps up the history of T-Mobile. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you guys on the next video. I'm the SMT and we'll see you around. Peace.